In the U.S., everyone puts all the companies they've, started, they've tried to set up because that shows, that shows entrepreneurship, and people value that in the U.S., and they value that less in Europe and also in the Netherlands. So we turned those four uh, you know, broad areas, we pulled them into the 12 survey indicators where we went to, your, where we went to Greek entrepreneurs and said, these are the ones that correlate most with entrepreneurship outcomes, and we said, how do you feel about your environment? Okay, so I'm going I'm to show you those results. Ultimately, there are about uh, 34 countries that, uh, were, that, I guess, were statistically relevant when we started to look at the numbers. Sorry to say, Greece was absolute last. Actually, there was one more country that was below you, but that government didn't want us to share the data. It's a European country, and I'm sure it's not hard to guess. But you're absolutely last, okay? And what's interesting here is if you look at the top five countries, right, you see that there are some countries that we, we can guess would be in the top five. China and India, huge emerging markets, lots of entrepreneurship growing. We can expect that. U.S., we know that. New Zealand, always done well in the ease of doing business indicator. And then there's Kenya. Africa's growing, and Africa's growing, and also their entrepreneurs are growing. And if you look, there are other African countries too. No one would think about that. Okay? So we in Europe don't perform well on this indicator. Okay? Now, let me double click on that. Remember I showed you those 10 different policy indicators, right? Levers. And then these are the results for Greece on all 10 of them. In four out of the 10, you are absolute last. And in eight out of the 10, you're bottom five of those, of those 34. So that's actually where you stand. These are, your, these are the entrepreneurs in Greece telling us this. This is not us doing any analysis. Right? Now, obviously, there's a bit of a correlation between GDP and we've had a bad year, and I'm sure that affects their mood and how they're going to answer the survey. But this is, these are the results. Let me double-click on a few of them. So let's look at uh, sources of capital. Right? So here the question was asked, um, you know, to what extent are there adequate sources of capital? Only 10% of entrepreneurs said they're adequate sources of capital. Now, that's actually a very negative thing, but let's turn it on its head. Let's look at it positively. This means that there are about 80% of people that are saying they're inadequate source of capital. That means they, they think they can grow their business, but they can't find the money. That's actually positive news. We just need to find them the capital and figure out how to get them the capital. Let's look here at uh, commercialization of uh, R&D. Once again, Greece ranks absolutely low, and we've set a, a, a set of peer countries here. Right? So they're commercializing R&D and figuring out ways to commercialize R&D is important. And it's, it's interesting. We mentioned it before here, I think, that you actually have a very rich culture in engineering and technical sciences. My understanding is that when you, try to, when you apply for university, those are, the those are the courses that are most readily filled. That's not true in other places, right? You go to my country, they want to do the social sciences, right? This, and the, these, are, these are the interesting places where you can actually build, commercialize and, and grow some real, real companies. Teaching on entrepreneurship. I think I, I mentioned uh, before the, uh, the issue about English and second language. I think this is something in, in most countries, we don't do this. But this is something that we have to instill in the people because it's, it's about teaching our kids how to do business at an early age. That's what this is about. And then uh, the mindset uh, issue. So to what extent do individuals feel supported when they try to succeed uh, individually? It's actually very low. And this is important. Most entrepreneurs do not succeed the first time. They try and try and try again. If your culture is actually discouraging of that, then very often you will try once and you will fail and you will not try again. Let me get the cushion job at the government or let me go work for a big company. Yeah. So, those are some of the, uh, I guess, outcomes. There are uh, a series of questions. We've actually analyzed them in more detail. There's a report which we'll ask SCNA to share and to send around for those that are interested. We've done a lot more analysis. Now let's turn to what could be done, right, uh, in your environment. And in fact, you, you do poorly across the board. So here are some thoughts that you may want to take along, and I do not claim to be expert enough to think about how to apply them in the Greek context because that would require some more analysis and investigation. But let me just share some things that others have done. We talked about seed funding. Angel networks are an incredibly important source of seed funding. And it's not just about knowing that rich guy. 
right? Not the rich guy on the Lagarde list, whoever it is. It's actually creating a network of individuals that can connect with the entrepreneurs because it's not just about the seed funding. It's also about all those other things. I have an accountant for you that can help this new business huh? or a lawyer or all those things that come with, a, with, an, with an entrepreneurial network. And this is what you find in a place like Kansas City, which is, by the way, the home of the Kaufman Foundation, which has sponsored this. Incredible amount of, of, of angel networks. This is what the government policymakers here can help stimulate, an environment whereby you get angels to come together and to come together with entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurship. There's a role for corporates to also stimulate entrepreneurship within their people. Right? They can encourage people to set up businesses from what they know within their organizations. So I'm going to give you the answer of Danfoss. Danfoss is a manufacturing company in the south of Denmark. In 2003, they had to lay off jobs. They thought, we have to push everything to China because China's competing with us. What they did is they established this VC program where they actually helped people, employees internally, set up businesses. Now, interestingly enough, those businesses were very closely correlated to what they did, and they became suppliers. And it actually created a cluster of activity which reinforced the competitiveness of southern Denmark around what they were manufacturing. And since then, not only did Danfoss get returns on these, VC, on these VC investments, they also created a better environment where they became a more competitive company overall in the business they were in. Tax credits and incentives. Let me just talk about bankruptcy law, okay? It has something to do with risks. My company went bankrupt eight days ago, okay? Michael Porter's company went bankrupt eight days ago, right? And everyone in, a lot of my clients in the Middle East are condoling me. They say, oh, I'm sorry this happened, how's it going? And even a lot of my clients in, in Europe are saying so. But it's actually a good thing. Why? Because this bankruptcy law, which we, have used to, uh, which we have used, has now allowed us to create a larger merger with Deloitte's consulting practice. The way the bankruptcy law works in the U.S., it tries to minimize the time by which you actually have a company going through bankruptcy because that gives m creditors the high, uh, more chance of recovering the debts. Right? If you look at Greece, based on the ease of doing business report, you only recover 44 cents on the dollar. In the U.S., it's above 70 cents on the dollar. We, would, we, could not be, we want to be more strategically significant in our industry by merging with Deloitte Consulting, and we've gone through bankruptcy to, to enable this. This is a mechanism. This is a positive mechanism for us. Right? In Europe, it's seen as very negative. Right? Science-based competitions. I won't talk about Chile. I don't have enough time. But let me talk about the entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, and the media focus that we can provide towards entrepreneurs. If you think about it, who are your role models here in Greece? I'll tell you the role models are in Holland, the soccer players, right? You go to the US and those role models we've seen before, the Bill Gates and their Steve Jobs, right? It, we have to be able to create more role models in the, among entrepreneurs. And if you, if what happened in Korea in 1997, if you recall, there was the Asia crisis, the K-balls unraveled. What the government realized right then is like, we need to reorient ourselves around the entrepreneurs. And so what they started to do is they started to profile a lot of the entrepreneurs that came out of, that actually were former employees out of Sangsum and LG and all those other cables, and they got a disproportionate amount of attention, and the whole culture towards entrepreneurship started to change in an environment that was basically large cables, right? Those large, fully integrated, massive in, uh, companies. And that spawned the creation of the most successful online gaming industry in the world. Very successful. All, and it started out with immediate attention. Focus on failure, right? Changing attitudes towards failure is also important, and it's increasingly being seen as such. In Singapore, they have something called the Phoenix Fund. The Phoenix Fund is, is an award given to the entrepreneur that's failed once and been successful a second time. That's the way of stimulating uh, or, stimulate or changing the thinking around failure. So, this all comes down to the environment we create. And the policymakers here in Greece have actually an obligation to think about this in, a, in an integrated manner, in a strategic manner, and think about how are we going to do this. There are multiple pathways towards creating that environment, right, if you think about it at a higher level. Most people will think immediately of the Silicon Valley model. I would advise against it. No one else has been able to replicate that, with the exception maybe of Boston. You, it's very difficult to create an environment where you have Stanford and Caltech and then a number of VCs around that and to generate entrepreneurship that way. That's not the model. There are very different models that are possible. 
There's what we call the anchor model, which we use large companies to generate spin-offs. There's in Korea, we use the, the fact that there's a crisis, never waste a crisis, to turn the attention around, creating an ecosystem of, of entrepreneurs. There are many ways of doing this. But you need to think about those policies. They're going to affect those entrepreneurs and have the entrepreneurs respond favorably to what you're doing. Because they're the ones that are going to create business. They're the ones that innovate. They're the ones that are going to create value. So uh, I want to end by saying thank you. I, um, I have met a number of your entrepreneurs here. And I, for one, I share optimism in, where, in I think, the future of, of the entrepreneurial spirit here. I personally have a romantic relationship with Greece. And I do wish uh, everyone here success through I know what's trying times. And I hope you realize I can empathize with you, given that also part of a bankrupt firm as well. Thank you very much.